they're capable of doing very bad things, and we're going to deny the entire country this class of equipment. You know, people in the government in the last two administrations ago thought they were going to hobble Huawei, come back stronger than ever, making incredible chips. Bitch, bitch, little bitch. I made you my bitch, Jesse. Bitch, bitch. Yeah, bitch. America wanted to kill Huawei. They threw everything they had at them, sanctions, blacklists, political pressure. They thought they could cripple a tech giant and maintain their dominance. But what if I told you they didn't just fail? What if I told you they accidentally created their own worst nightmare? Today we're going to look at how the crusade to destroy Huawei has backfired spectacularly, turning a telecom company into a vertically integrated monster that's now coming for NVIDIA's crown. Let's look at the data and expose one of the biggest strategic blunders in modern history. Who do you think has the best chance of challenging NVIDIA? The other black swan that I think is missing in the equation today, my early prediction for 2026 is Huawei, where I think that there's lithography technology that exists in China that is not publicly discussed, that is going to be deployed in Huawei and all these fabs that they're building in mainland China. And Huawei can create at a very low cost, probably very high volume and probably in reasonably short order chips that can start to rival for certain market applications, chips that might be expensive and long. Give a timeline time. for that. Two years, three years out. I think they start to make announcements. And by the way, remember chip architecture and even Jensen's talked about this is being redesigned with AI. So AI can design better chips. So announcements 2026, impact 27? Probably fair. While the world was watching the front door, Huawei was building a new house. The prediction of a 2026 announcement isn't just a speculation. It's based on real progress. Huawei's chip design arm, High Silicon, is already producing 7 nanometer chips, like the Kirin 9000S with SMIC, China's top foundry. They're no longer catching up, they're building a parallel sanction-proof ecosystem. The US wanted to kneecap them, but they just forced them to learn to run a marathon. Let's check out some comments. Also, China has less constraints on power, therefore it can deliver a pretty decent output with lesser quality chips. Ban it. National security threat. China itself is the biggest chip market in the world, and it will be the biggest AI chip market as well. That means Huawei just does business inside China will be more than enough for them to prosper. China is not just in a catch-up race, they're in a primacy race. And they are trying to develop primacy in lithography technology, which will give them primacy in manufacturing, which will give them primacy in AI, which will give them economic leverage over the planet. And that is very critical for us to understand. This is not about stealing data from ASML. Like, no one gives a shit if you're sitting in China, you're thinking about... I've got the world's best scientists or some of the world's best scientists and I'm giving them the resources and I'm giving them the mandate to go solve this problem. The government, as I mentioned last year, put $40 billion against this problem and said, go figure it out. And these guys at Tsinghua are publishing some groundbreaking research on how to do it. Exactly. This isn't about stealing a few blueprints from ASML. This is a state-backed, all-out sprint for technological sovereignty, what some are calling China's Manhattan Project for chips. The Chinese government has poured billions, with a reported $40 billion fund, into this effort. The aim is not to just try and survive. They're aiming for complete independence from Western technology, from lithography to chip design. The sanctions were meant to be a wall. Instead, they became a starting gun for China's own race to the top. And here's some more comments. China is not in any race. They just want to better themselves every day. In this particular case of lithography, they are defending themselves against US aggression. And they will achieve it, and we are happy with China's growth. USA is a sinking ship. Trump just speeded it up 10x. Do you know why Huawei is banned? There are multiple reasons, but I'll give you the big one. Huawei, as a corporation, it runs like a communist party. Let me give you the breakdown. It's essentially a co-op company. So the founder of Huawei um, and the company, they actually went to US and Europe to study corporate structure. They want to learn what works and what makes like Western companies so successful. And what they learned is that if you distributed the shares of the company to the workers, people stay for the company and work really hard. And they're committed to do great things much more than like a quarter or even a year or two years of um, work. They're committed to do 
decades and generations and generations of work. So Huawei, if you ever look at the company, they're a private company because the employees of the company owns all the shares. Even the CEO, like the, the founding essentially father of the company, he owns something like less than 1% of the company. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. And anyways, that's just one of the reasons why the company is essentially completely banned, right? And if you ask me, what is the next NVIDIA company? It's already here. It's Huawei. They're basically Apple plus Tesla plus NVIDIA. It's crazy. They're making cars that are like extremely crazy and fast. Their infrastructure in communication is way beyond than your commercial goods that Apple is doing. You, they basically you basically push them into now a closed market in China and somehow they evolve into a better retail product than Apple. Yeah, they're unstoppable. Maybe one day the rest of the world will see it. This is a pretty important point that gets lost in the propaganda. Huawei is not state-owned. It's a private company owned by its employees. The founder, Ren Zhengfei, owns less than 1% of the company. The rest is distributed among its workers, creating a powerful incentive for long-term innovation. And look at the result. The US tried to kill a telecom company, and instead, they created a monster. Huawei is now a leader in semiconductors, designing and now helping manufacture their own chips. Electric vehicles, their partnership with Aito is already outselling competitors in China. AI, building a full-stack AI solution to compete with NVIDIA. Software, the Harmony OS ecosystem is a genuine alternative to Android. The irony is ridiculous. While the West accuses China of state control, the U.S. government is taking a multi-billion dollar stake in Intel to prop up its own semiconductor industry. Who's nationalizing what exactly? Let's look at some comments. I trust them more than any U.S. or Zionist company. There goes Jensen's leather jacket money. Anyone who doubts China's determination and capabilities is just not thinking clearly. China has a massively effective industrial policy. It's amazing. It's stunning. Look at Huawei. You know, incredible. You know, people in the government in the last two administrations ago thought they were going to hobble Huawei, come back stronger than ever, making incredible chips. Uh, also, another thing, that a lesson that we could learn from China, they invest in the talent. We, you know, we, we don't have an effective workforce system in this country. Well, well, well. Look who's finally admitting the truth. Ah, uh, Gina. So this is Gina Raimondo the former U.S. Commerce Secretary, the very person that was in charge of the sanctions designed to hobble Huawei. After years of vowing to take the strongest action possible, she's now on camera admitting they've come back stronger than ever. This is an admission of a colossal policy failure. Her policies and those of the previous administration didn't just fail to stop Huawei, they forced it to become the vertically integrated behemoth it is today. This is a masterclass in how to create your own competitor. She sounds surprised, but anyone paying attention could see this coming. And now for more comments. Telling lies while in office, spoken truth when out of office. The most important thing to learn from China is, don't blame others for your own failures. Try to find solutions inside, not outside. Why politicians can only tell the truth after they have left the office? Do we vote them for lying? This goes to the core of why the export control on AI chips was fundamentally wrong. Because the whole reason that NVIDIA dominate is because people are willing to use the language, the ecosystem that provided by NVIDIA. It's a soft power. People willingly learn how to program in CUDA, learn how to program to use NVIDIA chips. And once you learn the language, just how hard for you to learn a second language. Once you know one kind of language, you never want to learn a 
different language just to do the same thing. That's how what developer feels. If they learn how to program on top of NVIDIA system, they never want to learn a new one. And NVIDIA has that power, soft power, that everybody is willing, talking the same language. They are going to make money forever, but not now. Because the export control, Huawei come up a system with new language, this developer has to speak. They don't want to, but because of the export control, there's no alternative. The Huawei system is going to get better and better. That language, that system is going to get more and more users. Eventually compete with the dominant power. History will go back and look and see how lucky Huawei is because of the export control. Mr. Liu is absolutely right. NVIDIA's real power isn't just its hardware, it's the CUDA software ecosystem. It's the language every AI developer speaks. By banning the export of high-end NVIDIA chips to China, the US has given Chinese developers no choice but to learn a new language, Huawei's language. They are creating a captive market of millions of developers for Huawei's Ascend AI platform. This is how you break a monopoly. You don't just build a competing chip, you build a competing ecosystem. The US export controls handed Huawei a golden opportunity to build its own software mode, a strategic gift of immense proportions. And now more comments. US arrogance, condescending superiority complex, created self-destructing mind numbness, and now the result, game over. I wish we could buy Huawei and Xiaomi in Australia. So there you have it. The story of Huawei isn't just about one company's survival, it's a lesson in unintended consequences. The US didn't just fail to stop Huawei, it forced it to become more powerful and more independent than ever before. From chips to cars to AI, Huawei is building a self-reliant tech stack that is completely outside of Western control. And that brings us to the bigger picture. The recent pager attacks in the Middle East are a stark reminder that any supply chain with a US footprint is a potential security risk. For any nation that values its independence, relying on technology with built-in backdoors is no longer an option. China's recent ban on NVIDIA's H20 chips is just the beginning. The future of tech is being rebuilt and is happening outside the walls of Silicon Valley. What do you think? Is Huawei the biggest threat to NVIDIA? Did the US create its own competitor? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you got any value from this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you don't miss our next upload. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye. When I say that I want these things, I mean that I want them, and I don't want to have to ask again.